Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Thinning the Herd. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode three of eight. It's time to act up. Acts 13, 46, 48. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Verse 48. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life, believed. Notice that word, appointed. Let me say it again. Notice that word, appointed. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life, believed. That's a whole nother story. Maybe we'll talk about that in another message later. You can find other, maybe even better, more supportive scriptures that clearly distinguish us from them, at least for a short while. If you type up the word Gentile, you will see that we are quite a mess of an undistinguished peoples, other than by our appetite for sinning. We just didn't care about the things of God at all. More of that in Acts 14, 27, 15, 7, 9, 17, and 18, 5, 6. Now we know or think we know that Jesus would eventually stitch in the rest of us in this great plan of salvation, right? You should know that in switching channels, it is not the greatest act of vengeance ever played out in human history. If you look at how the Jews have been attacked throughout history, including what Hitler did to them, you will see that they called the curse upon themselves. Same same for us today, by the way. For the innocent that weren't there when it happened, you should know, like in all wars, there is collateral damage. This in and of itself is a good reason why you shouldn't wait to surrender your measly life to Jesus. Got a Bugatti in the garage? Jesus has chariots of fire that can go invisibly at any time and, in fact, go outside of time to operate. Bugatti hasn't got that transporting down yet, although at top speed you might feel like they're close. Stop this car. Look and see why. And what is the purpose, all in one series of scriptures? Roman 11, 11, 25. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Certainly not. But through their fall to provoke them to jealousy, salvation has come to the Gentiles. Now if their fall is riches for the world, and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, Inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry, if by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh and save some of them. For if their being cast away as a reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broke off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree, do not boast against its branches. But if you do boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broke off that I might be grafted in. Well said, because of unbelief they were broken off. And you stand by faith. Do not be haughty, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. Therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God on those who fell severity, but towards you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if you are cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, who are natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. See also Acts 10.45 and 11.1. 
Before you know it, he will refocus his attention to the Jewish nation, and they will know him like we used to want to know him. We should see by the things happening on this rock, and so it is in part by the apathy of the church. Do you see why the urgency now? Never forget you are grafted and not part of the original tree, but grafted. We have the Jews to thank and to pray for, for by some and their unbelief they were broke off, leaving a place for some of us in the tree of life, that is, Jesus Christ. Luke 21, 24, And they will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles, until the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Now if we continue in Matthew, we see a man released from his deserved prison stay, and awaiting a death sentence for an exchange of nothing. Yes, yes, not doing anything on his part, and set free. A murderer out wrestling with a wild, conundrous bewilderment of thoughts as to why he should live and an innocent man killed in his place. Jesus was always working, doing the Father's will. Salvation for the murderer. One of the thieves on the cross? So in his very death, two out of three bad guys headed for crucifixion were saved. I have a story of the possible reaction of Barabbas that I heard or read in a book that I had to repeat, as it is an outstanding perceptional moment. Matthew 27, 25, 26. Then he released Barabbas to them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Jesus was freeing men while also paying the price for our sins. Barabbas being set free represented the revelation that Jesus was on his way to completing his final task, to set us free from the ruler of this world and from sin. If we knew what was really happening, then they would have carried him to the skull. Luke 23, 39, 43. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Is it too late for you? Well, of course I would say no, as this man was hanging on a cross, paying for his own sins, headed for hell when he saw it. Jesus had the if factor like no man. Did he beat Jesus into heaven? Was he the first one into heaven, a thief? We know Jesus was quite busy for three days, but this man? But then how could Jesus say he would be with him in heaven that same day? Perhaps Jesus escorted him there and then went to work. Now you see me? No, you don't. And when I say no, you don't, I mean K-N-O-W. No, you don't. Luke 24, 16 and 31. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. Then their eyes were opened and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Magic? Nope, he was rekindling the flames he had left behind before he was crucified. I can't help but think he did more after his death and before his ascension than most of us doing our entire spiritual lifetimes. This is solvable with his help. Matthew 27, 51, 53. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Hey, Jesus, show us a sign. Yes, just tell us plainly who you are. And by the way, who are all these zombies walking around? Hey, Bob, how's death treating you? What you doing here at McDonald's? Don't you have worms to feed? Now, in my mind, the earth split because Jesus, as he left his body, tore down the gates of hell and the home of Satan in order to get those keys back. You know the ones we gave him in the garden? Genesis 3, 6, Luke 4, 6, and Revelations 1, 18. Now, 1 Peter tells us of some other things he did while walking around in the three-day and busy world. 1 Peter 3, 19, 20. But more on that later. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together, we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy 
and create space for the light of lights to shine through into people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.